according to internal documents obtained exclusively by the Post. Facebook researchers presented company executives with the worst of the worst hate speech on the platform. One example they showed was an image of the four original House Squad members with the poster and commenters referring to them with racial, ethnic, and sexist slurs. All four of them are women of color. Researchers told Facebook the majority of these worst of the worst posts were directed at minority groups and that Facebook's hate speech detector was often missing them. They suggested an aggressive overhaul of the software to remove such posts before the user could see them. But Facebook's execs balked, according to the Post. They feared such a system to, could protect some groups over others, with one policy executive raising concerns over potential backlash from conservative partners. In a document prepared for Global Public Policy VP Joel Kaplan, instead, two sources familiar with the internal debate told the Post that Facebook instituted half measures that left minorities more likely to encounter derogatory and racist language. In a statement to the paper, a Facebook spokesman defended the company's hate speech policies, saying in part that while it did implement some of the recommendations, implementing all of them would have actually meant autom fewer automated removals of hate speech. But as one of the people involved with the project told the Post, if you don't do something to check race structural racism in your society, you're always going to end up amplifying it. And that is exactly what Facebook's algorithms did. And we've talked at length about how Facebook has amplified conspiracy theories and extremism, not just in the U.S., but across the globe. In 2019, Facebook researchers raised those alarms, telling executives its algorithms and suggestions were pushing users into rabbit holes of violent, extreme, and conspiratorial content. Those were some of the findings in documents released by Facebook whistleblower Francis Hogan, who testified early last month that Facebook knew of these problems but did little to fix it, consistently choosing profits over people. Facebook has denied Hoggins' claims and says it has made changes to how it recommends groups. But are the changes too little too late? As misinformation, conspiracies, and hate speech circulate to millions of users. Joining me now is California Congressman Ro Khanna, who represents Silicon Valley and says Facebook should be broken up. Congressman Khanna, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So the Washington Post article is really just the latest example of Facebook being warned of a serious problem and the company not doing enough to address it. What was your reaction to this latest reporting? It was deep disappointment. I don't understand how in modern America you don't have an awareness that you have to have separate protections for those who are most vulnerable, people of color, uh, women, compared to uh, other groups. I mean, this is the Supreme Court recognizes that, the conservative Supreme Court. That's why we have protected classes. So the fact that a modern company doesn't have that basic understanding is problematic. And then they've never been transparent. I mean, the color of change has been asking time and again, yeah. share your algorithms, be transparent, let communities have input. And they, they just have refused to do that. Yeah, and, and Facebook clearly not doing a great job of regulating itself. So what is Congress doing when it comes to regulating social media giants like Facebook? And when will we see concrete action on this? Well, frankly, we're not doing enough. Uh, we haven't done uh, really anything uh, since Cambridge Analytica. It's a big failure of Congress. I have proposed an Internet Bill of Rights. Uh, it's stuck in committee. Uh, but we have to do some very concrete things. First, require public disclosure of uh, algorithms and uh, how these companies make decisions. Second, make sure uh, that uh, companies have to get rid of violent speech, speech that incentivizes uh, action that may lead to violence. That's not protected under the First Amendment. Uh, and third, stop uh, allowing them to collect all this data without consent and then micro-target hate speech to other people who may uh, be receptive to it and create these loud echo chambers of, of hate. So. Uh, I agree with you that there's been a failure on, on Congress to regulate, and uh, we need to step up. Yeah. Well, listen, it's hard to talk about political violence and rhetoric without talking about January 6th. And tonight, the January 6th subcommittee subpoenaed former President Trump and uh, ally Roger Stone and Alex Jones. So what does that tell you about your colleagues' investigation? Well, they're being uh, very uh, thorough. Uh, they are trying to get to the facts uh, and to make sure that every American has an interest in knowing what happened. Why is it that uh, we had basically an attack 
on our nation's capital, an attack on the democratic process. And how do we make sure that never happens again? I don't think there's any American, Democrat, Republican, or Independent, who wants to see the scenes that you're showing of people scaling the Capitol and attacking uh, the, the, the really place of our democracy. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we do live in a volatile political climate, and uh, we just saw the House censure Arizona's Paul Gosar over a video that he tweeted depicting the death of AOC. And yet Congressman Gosar points out Twitter never took down the video. How worried are you about the real-world consequences uh, of the kind of violent content or hate speech that is circulating on social media? I'm very worried, and one of the key reforms should be that you shouldn't have Section 230 immunity, which basically allows these companies to have anything up, if, you're, if you have speech that is inciting violence. Let me give you a, a, an example. Facebook, before January 6th, knew, their own private security knew, that there were going to be assassination attempts uh, on January 6th. The private security said, we ought to tell someone in law enforcement. Facebook refused to tell anyone. Cecilia King's book uh, documents all this on the truth about Facebook. That is That should be illegal. I mean, if you're sitting on information that is an incitement to violence, if you have those posts on these platforms, you should have a obligation to take them down, a legal obligation. And that's not the law right now. So we need reforms on Section 230, common sense reforms. Uh, and these companies you know, have to have bigger standards. I mean, I don't understand why we would criticize a newspaper or a television show for showing graphics that are obscene and inciting violence and why uh, a, a social media site thinks that they don't have to have any uh, similar ethical rules. It's, even if they have a First Amendment right, doesn't mean that that's a responsible thing to do as a stakeholder in democracy. Yeah. Good point. Well, listen, I want to turn to the Biden agenda because the House did pass the Build Back Better bill on Friday, and polls show that it is immensely popular, as is the infrastructure bill that the president just signed. Uh, yet President Biden's approval rating is still in the 40s. I'm wondering where you think the disconnect is here. Uh, is it simply poor messaging? People are hurting. It's been a tough year. I mean, we've had uh, the Delta variant. Uh, there's no doubt that there is inflation as a consequence of supply chain disruptions caused by uh, the pandemic. Uh, we're a polarized country. Uh, we're seeing uh, acts of violence, unfortunately, in uh, almost uh, every month. So people are frustrated. And it's very hard for anyone, frankly, to, to leave. But my hope is that we're turning the corner with COVID. The president's taking progressive action on inflation. People are going to see that these bills are going to deliver for the working class lower costs. And that will uh, turn around his poll numbers. Well, the Build Back Better bill is in the Senate now, where it is expected to get some changes. Uh, we know that Senator Joe Manson is not in favor of paid leave, and immigration may not survive the parliamentarian, frankly. Uh, so what happens if those things come out of the bill? Well, I don't understand why we would take out paid family leave. If you're for family values, if you're for valuing families, you ought to before allowing parents to look after their kids if the kids are sick or looking after their elderly parents. Uh, so I am hopeful that other senators will prevail. This won't come out. If it comes out, though, then we have to fight for it uh, in the next bill. I mean, there are too many good things in this bill to vote no on the bill. It's going to have universal uh, preschool for the first time, saving working class parents an enormous amount of money. It's going to have child care coverage, saving the working class and middle class money. It's going to have the boldest investments in climate, creating new jobs. So it's going to be a bill that really improves Americans' lives. Well, we're, we're definitely going to stay tuned to see uh, what priorities emerge from, from that legislation as it makes its way through the Senate. Listen, President Biden also nominated uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell to a second term today. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. I don't agree with uh, every decision he's made, but I developed a lot of respect for him uh, during the Trump administration, Trump would be tweeting out saying he was a traitor to America and that he was in uh, doing China's bidding. Uh, and he stood firm. He stood independent. Uh, so I think he's a person of integrity. Uh, and I respect the president's decision uh, to appoint him. I hope he will look at some of the asset purchasing decisions and, uh, and make sure that we uh, are aware of the inflation and assets that that has caused. Well, one last question, Congressman, since you are a Silicon Valley man. I know uh, Facebook has changed its name to Meta, but I'm actually wondering what your thoughts are on the Staples Center becoming the crypto.com arena. Well, I'm, I'm much more 
uh, supportive of the role that cryptocurrency can play in allowing people to transmit money across the country and world without fees. Meta concerns me because that's talking about the metaverse. You know, the Facebook vision uh, is that we'll all be wearing glasses and they'll be able to track and surveil us based on how we blink our eyes. So people should be concerned about the metaverse, especially if it's unregulated. I don't know. Something about Crypto.com Center doesn't just roll off the tongue uh, so easily. Listen, <laughs> Congressman Rokana, thank you so much. Enjoy your holiday.